Energy is the one thing that really does make the world go round. And of course it makes our Formula E cars go round too. But it can't be just conjured up out of thin air. It can only be transferred from somewhere else. So where exactly does Formula E get its energy from? All these cities around the world may well be going green, but as you might know, energy can't be created or destroyed, it can only be converted. So a big race like this one doesn't just happen, there's an awful lot of energy that's got to be put into it in the first place. Each event uses around 15 megawatt hours of energy, and that's a lot. About 2.9 of those are used for charging the cars, and the rest is powering things like lighting and charging stations and electric vehicles around the venue. Now that may not be as much as some other big, more traditional type events, but it is still many more times than the average person would use in a whole year. So how do they get that energy without creating an even bigger cost to the planet? So Chris, Formula E needs all this energy, but where does it get it from and how does it not make it literally cost the Earth? Basically there are three sources. First of all they use aqua fuel based on glycerine and internal combustion cycle. Then they use the grid, they cover the rest with traditional mobile generation. This is the latest addition, shall we say, to the uh, power supply side of the event. About five kilowatt peak of solar power, and it's used to drive the gaming arena that we have behind okay. us. So why is it that an electric powered race is so much more efficient than a traditional combustion fuel powered event, would you say? Well, because it's uh, zero emissions. We power the vehicles with aqua fuel technology, which is a zero emissions technology. It's a clean energy and so the vehicles, the whole event is clean. The typical petrol driven car, an internal combustion engine, loses approximately 50 to 85% of its efficiency in its overall cycle. An electrical vehicle, such as the ones we're using here, is efficient in a range of 75 to 90 percent wow. energetically speaking. It's quite a difference isn't it? Yeah, that's why it's so relevant to be here and form part of this event which is pushing into the public side, the realities of electrical yeah. vehicles and electrical mobility. Behind these screens is perhaps one of Formula E's hidden gems. Very special generators are providing all of the energy that the Formula E cars need to charge up. But incredibly, it's doing it using an innovative and very exciting new source of fuel. So Andy, you guys have developed these pretty impressive generators behind us. Can you tell me a little bit about how they work? It's based on a standard coming diesel generator, but adapted to run on glycerin. I have a sample here of the fuel, which um, you can taste it if you want. It's non-toxic. Really? Yes. <laughs> Water soluble. <laughs> that is really, That's really sweet. Although we call it a fuel, in the traditional sense, it doesn't behave like a fuel in that we don't have any problems storing it. It burns cleanly. You can source it almost anywhere. Just tell me exactly why it's so much better than something like diesel, for example. We're looking at probably a 50% reduction in CO2 produced with this system. If you take that over a season, you're yeah. looking at probably 12,000 tonnes less CO2 produced. What about the amount of energy that you can extract out of this? Let's say a litre of this compared to a fossil fuel. Well, if you take a litre of petrol in a, in a, a standard racing car, internal combustion engine, we're looking at about two kilometres. A litre of this used to charge an electric racing car, we're looking at probably four kilometres. And it's not just the glycerin that's unique. The generators that convert it are the only two portable McNeil generators in the whole world and work by preheating the ingoing air, which then reacts with the fuel, meaning a lower energy fuel like glycerin is able to burn stably and drive the piston in the same way as other fuels. Amazingly, any standard diesel generator could be converted to this method, meaning we could utilize the existing infrastructure instead of having to create costly new networks. Glycerin generators like the ones here at Formula E may only just be starting to become well known, but the potential is huge for them to spread around the world and help solve some of those renewable energy issues. And there's also really promising stats coming out on solar panels. They're easy to fit, they don't have to be an eyesore, and can fit onto an existing roof structure that most people already have. 
We've all seen wind turbines appearing more and more frequently all around the world and technologies like kinetic energy flooring pads which harness energy as people walk across it are a real fascinating area of growth too. It really brings home just how much energy there is all around us and how we could save a lot by only switching things on when there are people there to use it. Some of these amazing technologies may already be in your homes right now whereas others of course are just at the beginning of their development path. The field's firing off in loads of different directions, but what's great is that Formula E is right here at the forefront of it, helping to push it all forward.